Welcome to another video from explainingthefuture.com. This time I'm going to talk about a question we sometimes ponder, maybe when we're wandering down the road, standing at a bus stop, things like that. The question, of course, is do we need a moon base? Which is a big question and it's about space exploration and things like that, but it's also about broader matters to do with ourselves. But before we get to that, a bit of housekeeping about uh, this channel and these videos, because this is the fourth of my first of the month videos, if you see what I mean. I promised you four back in November 2021, and this is the fourth. And I said we'd get to four and see how things were going. And the feedback has been really, really good, fantastic feedback, people writing really informed and interesting comments on the other videos. So thank you greatly for those. I've enjoyed reading those and having that discussion. But sadly, the views have not been where I would have, have hoped. This hasn't taken off yet again as a channel. And of course it might not, you know, we don't all have everything we put up always, always works. This, this at the moment is, is a bit niche in terms of YouTube, at least compared to my other activities. So I'll see what happens. I think I'm not going to continue with a monthly video, probably every other month, something like that. So this will be the last of the monthlies for now. I'll probably be back on the 1st of May with the next of these videos, something like that. Things will continue. We'll see how it goes. Maybe things will pick up and uh, I'll go back to a monthly video. Anyway, back with today, let's not get despondent, back with today, let's address this question, do we need a moon base? And this might sound like a very out there futures question. But interest in this and progress towards this is advancing quite significantly right now in early 2022. So let's just take a look at where we currently stand. Current plans. And I would say that plans for returning to the moon and building moon bases and all this sort of stuff have been on and off for a very, very long time since, well, for, since we first went to the moon, to be honest. So uh, everything can change. But right now, we do have NASA's Artemis program, which is a program to return to the moon. Artemis, I think, was the, was it the sister of Apollo. So this is a sister of the Apollo program. And there's various uh, mission objectives for the Artemis program to land the first woman on the moon, to land the first person of color on the moon, and to do lots and lots of exploration, to be a staging post to go into Mars, and to establish a lunar base, the Artemis Base Camp at the Lunar South Pole. And this is not intended to be a massive base like the masses of domes and technology I've shown in videos in the past and other people have thought about for years and years. It's a small affair, and I always forget exactly what's in it, but I've got my piece of paper. Yes, the, uh, the Artemis Base Camp is going to have three things. The plan is to have a lunar terrain vehicle, which is a vehicle you can obviously drive around in on the lunar terrain, not a pressurized thing, you have to sit in your spacesuit when you're using that. But there'll also be, the plan is to have a, to have, I can never say this one, to have a habitable mobility platform, which will be a bit like a, a pressurized moon buggy, a bit like a really nice sort of camper van you can have on the moon to drive around in for up to a couple of weeks, you could live in that apparently. And there's also in the plan, a foundation surface habitat, which is a non-mobile, in other words, place you, you can live on the moon for a few days, it says, when you're, you're not in the camper van or, or doing other things. So this is part of the, of the Artemis project. And if we go out to the uh, web, as we uh, often do in these videos, here is Artemis, fantastic website on, on NASA's uh, website. NASA puts such amazing things out on the internet. It really does. It's got great images, admittedly, to use, hasn't it? But uh, NASA's website's always fantastic. And this tells us about the Artemis missions. There's a massive great document you can download if, if you wish. And there's all stuff about it, why we're going to moon, that type of thing. So if you want to follow up on things I'm talking about in today's video, go out to the Artemis website from NASA and, and have a look at that. And it's worth pointing out that the first Artemis mission, Artemis 1, is due to launch sometime after April 2022, when for the first time we're going to see some of the infrastructure being used, being tested and actually going to the moon. And specifically, the way Artemis is going to work, this is the plan anyway, is that astronauts will travel to the moon in an Orion space capsule, which has been developed for quite a while now, it's been built by Lockheed Martin, and they'll do so atop an SLS rocket, a space launch system rocket, which is being built by all sorts of contractors, including Boeing. There's a lot of private companies involved in this. 
and Artemis 1 is the first time we're going to see an Orion capsule launching atop an SLS rocket going to the moon and the Orion capsule will go round the moon. And I think when we start to see that in the news, which should be, fingers crossed, in 2022, when that happens and we see a capsule that could have carried human beings, it won't, it's an unmanned mission, an uncrewed mission, Artemis 1, but when we see that potential capsule that could have carried people going around the moon in 2022, I think this will ignite interest and in this and also questions of why we're we doing it and what's going on, which is why I'm making this video. Anyway, as it says here, just to complete the picture, astronauts will get to the moon using Orion and SLS, but they'll go down to the surface using the uh, Starship HLS, the Starship Human Landing System from SpaceX. And it's not just America and various pri private companies involved in this. We've also got China doing quite a lot of lunar stuff over the past decade, actually getting to the moon with a soft landing a few years ago, bringing some rocks back, that type of stuff has happened. And China said most recently in December 2021 that it plans to have some kind of lunar research station, an unmanned lunar research station around 2027. So we might be in midst of seeing another, another moon race. It'll just be America and China this time, not America and Russia, although Russia apparently is cooperating with China. These things all get geopolitical, as I'm sure you would expect. So anyway, the main point I wanted to make with this slide was not to go through the details of exactly which rockets and all the things to the nth degree, but to make it clear that this is practical stuff. There is interest and investment and research going on right now to get people back to the moon and potentially to build some sort of base on the moon. Now, this raises all kinds of questions. The first one of which is fairly obviously, that's a lot of money. It's going to cost us tens of billions, hundreds of billions to do this, I'm, I'm sure. Shouldn't we spend that money on other things? We know that one in nine members of the human species is malnourished. They haven't got enough to eat. And in that context, is it even moral to spend all this amount of money on space exploration and space travel and all that type of stuff? And this has been an argument made since the Apollo program in the 1960s, and it was a good argument then, and it's a good argument today. And I've only got, got, I think, two things to say on this. One is there are positive arguments in favour of returning to the moon and building a base and that type of stuff. I'm going to come on to those for the majority of the rest of the video. But I think the other thing to bear in mind is that even if all space travel and all space exploration budgets disappeared tomorrow, there is no guarantee that all that money would be spent on easing poverty and hunger and all the other things that plague so many people on planet Earth. That the reason we've got these problems is not because of space exploration, it's because of the, the means of allocating resources and how we treat each other on planet Earth that come out of our, our current systems of governance. And we've got various systems of governance in different countries and the different philosophies behind them, but they all end up with the rich getting richer and the poor getting poorer, it seems. They don't even things out. So I think it is too simplistic to say, well, if we stop spending money on space exploration, if we didn't do these things, that we'd solve these problems back on Earth. They are big issues, they're important issues, but they're well beyond the scope of this topic or this video to address. So let me move on to, I think, the three key reasons why I think we will in time decide to build and build and inhabit a moon base. The first one is in some ways the least important and in some ways the most important. And that is our emotional need as a race, as, as a species, to do stuff, to, to explore, to go out. This was part of the logic of the Apollo program, which is, of course, also about Cold War politics. But there was this human beings leaving the Earth doing stuff. The, uh, the first footfall on the moon was described as a footfall 250,000 miles away that changed the way we think about ourselves. And I think that's still true. And the moon is an interesting place to go for a very particular reason, because across history, we have sought to go further, to expand our horizons, to expand our realms. That's, that's the history of the human species. And yet the only place we can seek to expand to, or, or could in the past have seek to expand to, that everybody on the planet can see is the moon. We can all look up at night on a clear night and go, oh, look, the moon. 
Wouldn't it be great to go there? We know people have been there. It just looks like a place we can just look at and see. And I think we have this emotional attachment to it now because of what happened in the late 60s and early 70s with the Apollo program. And But more broadly, because it is clearly a territory that we can spy and we can... Yes, that, that is a... That is something to shoot for, as we did in, in the past. So I think our emotional need to, to achieve great things is part of this. And to some extent, we did this extraordinary stuff with space travel and, and landing on the moon in the 1960s. And what have we done since then as a species? And of course, we've done some amazing stuff. We've developed the internet, internet extraordinarily. We've linked together, as I've discussed in, in videos here fairly recently. We've developed extraordinary computing technology. But we haven't done that single amazing thing. We haven't pushed ourselves out. We've gone out and come back again. And I think we have a need emotionally to go out again at some point. Now, I think we also have a practical need because today we talk a lot about sustainability. And it's a great idea, sustainability, living within our resource means. But it is, of course, impossible. You cannot, in a closed system like the planet Earth, go on using stuff indefinitely. Eventually, it will run out. We can live more sustainably, certainly, but we can't live sustainably. People talk about renewable energy. There is no such thing as renewable energy. Um, even things like solar power and wind power and wave power, we might have an infinite supply until the sun goes anyway of, of solar energy hitting the Earth, but the means of converting that into power we can use do use resources. They use rare earth metals and this sort of stuff, whether we're making solar panels or we're making wind turbines or whatever it is, there is a degradation of resources in the infrastructure used to turn these, quote, free renewable sources of energy into someone we can use. So eventually, we will run out. We can simply eke things out. And therefore, I think sustainability has to not just be about using less. It has to be about, if we're going to be really sustainable long term, it's about finding more which is going off-world to get more resources. And as you might know if you've been watching this channel for a while, I've made various videos here about resources from space, building space solar power satellites to beam solar energy to the Earth. And yes, we'd lose a lot in transmission, but we'd get some. Or we could mine the asteroid, or we could mine the moon. But however we do that, I think probably the moon will be part of that mix. If we wanted to build great solar power satellites, Probably we would have to use resources off-world to build them because getting resources into space to build them would take so much energy and resource. If we mine the asteroids, there are plans to bring asteroids back close to the Earth. We wouldn't put them in Earth orbit, rather dangerous. We would put them in lunar orbit, mine them there. Again, the moon would be involved. Or we might just mine resources directly on the moon and use them to build space infrastructure, not least infrastructure to help us move on to get to the Mars or this sort of stuff. Part of NASA's Artemis vision is we use the moon as a staging post to Mars, not just in terms of experience and technology, but in terms of, of resources. So I think longer term as a species, we will face the fact we live in a closed system on one planet. And if we want to have resources into the very far term futures, they will have to come from somewhere else. And going to the moon, establishing a presence on the moon will be part of that staging process. And in turn, I think that links to the most fundamental need we probably have to, to build a moon base. And that is our evolutionary need, beyond just sustainability, but about the survival of ourselves in terms of who we are and what we become. Now, in future studies, a lot of things are conjecture. And this video today is all about conjecture, moon bases. We haven't done that yet. It's real speculation. But this slide isn't. Choose choices we have, I would suggest to you, are pretty binary and pretty clear. The first choice we have is that we continue to live and then to become extinct, to die out on one planet. That is a choice we clearly, consciously or unconsciously, can make. Or the only real alternative is that we follow our previous evolutionary path and we evolve to conquer and inhabit new realms. The same with that our ancestors so many years ago clawed their way out of the oceans, found it was rather unpleasant on land, had to evolve bodies with completely different uh, anatomies to cope with breathing air and uh, keeping ourselves going when we couldn't actually float along in the oceans. We might have to do the same thing again. And we will 
at some point, and this is obviously getting a, a far distance out, we will evolve to cope better with the environment of space and going to the moon and living on the moon for a time will be, will be part of that. When space travel was first being talked about, human space travel back in the 1950s and into the 60s, there was a belief at the time amongst many people that we would actually have to evolve ourselves to do it. You know, the word cyborg came out of discussions at the time about people having to be evolved to cope with the environment of space. What we've done so far is to surround ourselves in spacesuits when we have to go out into space or onto the surface of a, of a lifeless world like the moon. But we could potentially alter ourselves to cope with it better, change our bodies consciously to cope with a new realm, the same way we did when we actually clawed our way out of the oceans. And to some extent, I think you can link that to why we've not been back to the moon for so long. We went there 50-ish years ago, and we came back. And it could be because we basically proved we can get there. That's the moon. We can go up there. That's fine. But to really go out into space, to actually explore and, and to find new, new realms for ourselves, we will have to be a bit different. And that means we had to come back to the Earth after our first forage out to another, another um, body out in space. And we had to develop really powerful computing technologies. We've done a lot of that. We had to develop robotics and AI. We're doing pretty well with that. And we had to learn about our own practical human machine and how to control it and augment it to control organic matter and fuse it with inorganic matter. We are very, very early on the road to doing that yet, as I've discussed in, in the last video. But I think we'll get there. My guess is, although we will get back to the moon and we probably will build a, build a moon base there in the 2030s or 2040s, I think it'll be another 50 years before we've developed the technology to evolve ourselves enough to really go on that journey out into space. But I think we will do it. And so I think a moon base is probably an inevitability because at some point it is going to be the next step for the human species to go out into space or more likely a post-human species, a post-human race. I would take you back to the, the first slide I put up here when I described China thinking about an unmanned moon base. And that's probably what's going to happen first. Moon bases are more likely to be like dark factories on the moon. Factories without people, you can therefore turn the lights out. That's what a dark factory is, a factory with no lights on because there's no people in it. So I think we're much more likely to build mining stations and things on the moon manned by robots than manned by people. And in time, we will alter ourselves for a bit so we can partake more in the, the population of these uh, spaces we will inhabit somewhere else. And some of us on Earth will look up and go, up there, there's some people or some robots doing stuff for us. It is a, I think it's an inevitability, as you can tell, that we will have to go out into space or we will stick to the first point on, on this slide. We will continue to live here and then eventually we will, we will die out. We'll get to a point of going, we've done enough. And I guess all of us as individuals are on this trajectory from birth to death and we get to a point where we go, We've done what we can, and then we'll just go down a bit. Maybe that's what will happen with the human race. But I hope we've still got the energy and the resource to go beyond that, to go out beyond on the Earth, to do other stuff. And when you see later on in 2022, when you see, fingers crossed, Artemis 1 launching the Orion capsule around the moon, that that's going to get us thinking in about this should be part of our future evolution, our future destiny. Anyway, I've waffled on a bit there about uh, do we need a moon base? What do you think? What are your thoughts about the future of space exploration and our, and our future as a species beyond planet Earth? But now that's it for another video. If you've enjoyed what you've seen here, please press that like button. If you haven't subscribed, please subscribe. And I hope to talk to you again very soon.